Bankstown Live started obviously with an idea, with a concept um, and with a desire to get to know who lives in our neighbourhood. Urban Theatre Projects, which I'm the artistic director of, is a Bankstown based company and the company hadn't made work specifically in Bankstown, I think for around 10 years. We'd made work in Western Sydney, but not in Bankstown. And because the West is shifting so rapidly in terms of demographics, I was really curious, well, who is living in Bankstown now and, who is going to, and who's calling it home? I've lived in Bankstown, I can't say all my life, but from when I was two years old. So Bankstown Live started really with one relationship across the road at 156 Northam Avenue and um, with a man called David Cranston. Because we're on the email list, uh, I got an email um, around probably last July, August, somewhere around there, saying they were looking for houses in the area uh, for a project. And when I read the email, it's the quickest I've ever responded to an email, I can tell you. I rang up and I said, uh, my house is what you're looking for. We sent out kind of a whole range of info, uh, we put it out in our e-news looking for front and back gardens and I honestly think within about two hours David had called and said I'm not sure if my backyard will be good enough but do you want to come and have a look? We just stood outside and said hello and she had a look and I said look it's an old house but what it has got is a, a I think the words were a pleasant backyard, a warm, welcoming feeling or attitude about it. So what do you think? Of course it would be good enough because he was offering it. And um, you know, I also believe that that's, you just say yes. In walked this lady. Don't know her from Adam. Hello. I said, hello. She said, I'm Rosie. I said, oh, this is Wally. This is so-and-so and that's there. Uh, okay, and she said, oh, we've got this project coming up, uh, blah, blah, blah. We'd be interested if, uh, if you'd be interested to lend us your house or whatever, and, and, and we're going to have a play, and I don't know what else. And I, I just said, yes, yes. And I love that because I totally believe that um, from one relationship can grow many. And I don't think that we have to, in doing Bankstown Live from that one relationship, transform it into a thousand relationships. I think if we can, that one relationship can um, grow to a hundred, which I think it will out of Bankstown Live, I think that's pretty amazing um, because building relationships takes a long time. A lot of the work's from Western Sydney artists, or, um, and I think that that's just really important. And the works that aren't from artists who, who live in Western Sydney or call Western Sydney home, um, are artists who've just got a fantastic practice and it's just um, have, connect, have found different ways to connect with people living in Western Sydney. It is pretty particular, you know, it's not every artist's cup of tea coming in, you know, having to be so flexible and open in their practice to uh, m like meet people who and then have a conversation with them and then sort of, you know, be thinking about, okay, how do I find the art in that of what I want to do or what is that content or how do I shape it and kind of recontextualise it into, a, um, into an artistic form. And, you know, that's really exciting for me because I think it's always interesting to put an artist in an uncomfortable place because I think that is when you make your best work, when you feel like you don't know what is going to happen. It's a different way to practice and I think the work evolves in a different way then because you have a different level of investment in it because you've got other people who are investing in it who aren't artists basically. And so I'm not interested in, in artists coming and working with us in a studio. They can do that anywhere. You know, we're a company that is about building relationships um, and a company that's about going out from ourselves, you know, um, because when we go out from ourselves and find out stories from other people, you know, then we can shape them into something that's, uh, that I think anyway, becomes quite universal. We've programmed four hours of work. And so, uh, and we've tried to think about the whole shape of the night. Really, so when people arrive, um, already it feels like we've shifted the energy. Yeah, so this is lemon scented gum. So I'll be using that today, which emits a nice perfume. And um, it's like aromatherapy, if you like. 
um, when I do the smoking ceremony. Get rid of uh, any bad spirits, any negative energy. Good evening. Uh, I'd just like to uh, acknowledge uh, the Darug country from this around here. Bankstown Live is a place to stop, to not feel like you're rushing anywhere and to, um, and to listen to story. It's just really amazing that we've been able to achieve that, really because one man in this block said yes. I'm overwhelmed, I'm delighted, I'm, um, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, just to be a part of it is, is uh, well, you know, it just grabs me. I love this, honestly, I love the involvement and I've got a, a, a front row seat where I can just sit and relax and have a look. And I really hope this happens again. Every, I'm, I'm thinking every year it should happen. And more welcome, more than welcome to come and do it again. And I'll offer my garden as well. Alwyn Ray Millow's um, Hopping Spirit House. He designed and built that with a, a man called David Hawkes. Um, but then it's been decorated um, through a series of chime making workshops. Alwyn and I have been talking about that project since 2011. Both of us feel deeply satisfied that we've got it off the ground. In the first half of the residency was building the house and then once the house was built, it suggests go on, you know, on, on the phone, email, internet, using of social media and then ringing up the, ember, the, the consulate, and then there's a one-on-one -on -one engagement. A, a, a lot of them were just chance meeting with people. And even these conversations with people, I, I guess it's a very important aspect of the work because you, that's how you get connected to the next person. So it was a build-up. Uh, some people kind of commit and then they back out, but that's part of the dynamic. I mean, I guess as a cultural worker, it, you take everything, you know, and then you kind of work with uh, elements in the project that, that, is, that are, uh, seems to pave way to new connections, uh, but you don't stop. No one person can carry that project on their own. You know, it's a project that needs people to help it be what it is. Uh, the practice of Bayanihan, I think it's a very old practice of uh, people helping each other. Normally the context is if one family, and usually this happens in regional places, you normally have traditional houses made from bamboo. If one family would want to relocate for, for many reasons, they would call for a bayanihan, and it's usually a shared kind of task and shared uh, maybe labor. I, I initially focused really on the Filipino community because of the, the grounding of the project on a particular cultural practice. And the best way to demonstrate is to have a, a visible presence of that community. I wasn't sure at the start of the project whether we will in, be incorporating music. But then, so I thought that maybe if you put chimes, and because it has reference to a kind of a spirit house, the spirit house and the wind and having an open structure allows it to kind of get more animated. And once you lift the house, I guess it takes the, the role of the music calls the spirit, it calls the spirit of, of community. Um, I wanted to do the project because it sounded like a community-based project. Um, uh, the spirit of people helping other people, um, generosity, cooperating. The whole, the whole idea, the whole notion of moving a house was cool. Philosophically, where we are today, um, you know, as a country, as a state, you know, as a neighbourhood, as a street, I don't think that we probably help each other enough. And really create uh, a more progressive culture, you know, a culture of caring, of sharing, of engaging, of communicating with people. We, I, I guess our systems, you know, it's a, it's a global thing, our economic systems kind of break down those, those fabric of societies and the social fabric. So I'm, I'm interested in, in again, I guess as an artist in, in how maybe creativity or, or new ways of thinking could actually start that kind of reclaiming of, of connection with people. You know, and the more we connect, the more we communicate, the less uh, misunderstanding we have, the more engaged we are in, in shaping our society. 
the more empowered we are as active citizens in, 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 a, in, a, in a community, in a nation. And it's a magical way to start Bankstown Live, led by Uncle Stephen Williams um, as part of a smoking ceremony. And every night I see that house carried down that street, I really do get goosebumps and get quite emotional because it looks like it's floating. And it's a coming to, together of cultures, you know, one of, our, um, one of our elders and traditional owners leading something that's been built um, and being carried by you know, people who are now calling Australia home. Okay, so now we can just spin. So if you point you can stay there, and if that point comes around, When I invited Emma to become uh, to come and be part of Bankstown Live, I had all these conversations back and forth, and I said I really want a couples dance, you know, like mums and dads, husbands and wives, you know. And I thought it would be great. I had a previous idea that if I could fill a street with ballroom dancers, that would be beautiful, not proper fancy ones, social ones. And Emma did all this research, kind of around. And she found this um, ballroom dancing group who used the. Bankstown Trotting Club. So I went up to Bankstown Trotting Club almost every Wednesday for like months, it felt like months, it's been going for months, and just to watch and hang out and be with them and start to get a relationship with Nancy and Albert and propose this notion, could we do something different with what they already know. Well, Emma's given a little bit of a contemporary take on the rumba and um, just again, having them dance to Toby Martin's Spring Feeling is um, for me super. Christmas decorations are already up at the family restaurant. And I love this place and I love the lunch out. And I wouldn't be anywhere else now for Christmas. And I'm glad I'm not dead. I'm glad I'm not dead. I'm glad that I'm not dead yet. That was a good idea, we went great, let's do that. And then the second idea I thought would be uh, fun to come up with a hokey pokey for the 21st century, a kind of universal party dance that involves everybody from all cultures. In the end, the hokey pokey ended up being my, me and my culture sharing that with the others because they decided they wanted to learn about the hokey pokey. With the dancers you see such a wonderful mix of the community. Um, I really enjoyed the dancing that they've done on the street. It reminds me exactly of what my mum does in the parks in the mornings. So for me I think it's about making myself relevant in, in, in a community. Not even, doesn't even need to be my own because I think the broader community is my own community still. Just because I don't live in Bankstown doesn't mean I'm not part of its community. These are a whole lot of songs that I wrote on this on this street and the street that runs parallel. So we're going to play some of them tonight. Toby Martin, who's um, who's written a whole bunch of songs, and it's songs from Northam Avenue. I mean, it's really you know they're songs, but they're poetry. They're absolutely beautiful. The first two songs that I wrote were very much about um, what I could see from, from Ivan and Mitra's house, and that was um, David and his house. So I wrote a song that was inspired by something that David told me. This one's dedicated to David Cranston. Hi, David. Um, he's, he was my host while I did my songwriting residency, and he was, he was great. Lots of, uh, lots of good chats, cups of tea.
You know, we talked about that idea about how you know the hosts were going to be a big part of it, and obviously we're going to spend a lot of time with them, and they're going to be very important. But that didn't really like um, sort of strike home until I did it. And um, yeah, I mean, without David and Michael, I mean, this, th these songs wouldn't be the way they are. The other place I wrote songs, um, Chapel Road, just on the corner up there, is a coffee shop. Um, I'm by a guy called Michael, and so I wrote songs at the front of Michael's coffee shop. It has changed the way I work, I think. Um, it's a combination of being a tourist and a local. Like, you're, you're, somewhere between, you're somewhere between the two, which works for me in, in terms of there's enough intimacy but also enough distance, which is quite good for my creative process, I think. Ray of light, security ground, golden square on the floor. Buses on, the chapel road, shake the windows and the windows and the door. I've got a guy called Alex who's playing uh, the oud and the keyboard. Through him I found this guy called Muhammad who plays the kunun and the kunun is um, this very interesting um, dulcimer-like instrument and it's the precursor to the piano. They basically put the kunun inside of a wooden box and it became the piano. And then I've got also um, Anne Lin who plays um, what she calls the zither. It's like a Vietnamese zither. And uh, in her sort of group is a guy called Fu who plays monochord. And they're both traditional Vietnamese instruments. The other two are traditional Arabic instruments. So that's been quite interesting, like taking these instruments that are traditional and musicians who often play in a traditional music idiom and kind of reapplying it to something that's that's not traditional. Go from you got some. I'm waiting You come by You lie There are some people who probably would have just been the last thing they expected and once their guard was let down, this whole sort of new world opened as well. And probably the same for me. I'm so excited about this. Um, Got up early this morning, as you can see, I nipped the grass again. <laughs> I love, I love this. It's an infinite life. It's an infinite life. It's an infinite life. It's an infinite life. We've commissioned six writers to write just a short piece, which then we've produced so it could be a podcast or, you know, play on the radio. And um, it's got this beautiful sound world built around it and people uh, come into a backyard, this backyard actually, where I'm sitting right now, on one of these deck chairs and put on some headphones and listen. An audience member last night told, uh, mentioned to me when they were coming out and said, gosh, I just don't stop and listen. It was just permission to stop and listen to a story and look at the pomegranates in this backyard, the figs, the children were running in and out from where they're playing and said it was just really beautiful. I was just taken somewhere else. A thin black girl with hair piled high on her head, disposed of from the Kudamunda girls' home in 1928 to middle-class Mossman. Before I go, I sit on Bunnings outdoor furniture with the bobble-headed twink I share with. I ask him if he's got the HIV yet. You have to explicitly state, I give nothing to my son. And then you have to say why. I only found that out after Grandma had been dead for four years. Like the mysterious way music embodies emotion, resonant within time. You are a part of me. Oh! <laughs>
I love the idea of just sitting and listening to her headphones and listening to the, the writers, and that was great. Yeah, fabulous. I'm going to take one portrait? Yes. Okay. Here we go. So Family Portraits is about, um, obviously about family, and it's about, for me, it was about connecting people together. Joanne Saad's Family Portraits, um, so, like conceptually such a simple idea, uh, but Joanne's had just a steady stream of people all night just wanting to sit and have a conversation. So on the night, what happens is that people are asked, the audience are asked to, to come in and sit with the, the participants, the families, and you have the backdrop and you have their, their, the furniture actually from their home. So you, you have that feeling of you are walking into their home and then you have a conversation and that conversation goes for as long as it needs to. And that's his dad and that's his mum. I even mum and dad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For me, for my work practice, I really love working with the whole thing of private spaces and um, in, within the public space as well. So this sort of project was ideal to be able to go inside, you know, local residents of Bankstown, inside their homes and photograph their interiors. But then to sort of take it that one step further and actually involve them within the process as well. So th to bring, you know, their, their, their furnishings as, as part of the installation as well to make it feel like it, it is that you are walking into their home and I'm just hearing the conversations you know they're saying you know welcome you know into our home welcome into my lounge room um, and when people are leaving you know they always say look thank you for inviting us into your home so and and, and that's and that that's for me has been really really beautiful to, to see that sort of happening and and every night I don't know what's going to happen. So that's sort of like the nice element of surprise for me. We didn't think of it, we just say yes, because uh, anything that promotes uh, meetings between people and so on, well, we are too busy. We live in the McDonald's area where everything is, uh, moves so fast and we don't have time even for our neighbours. Then after that conversation, I take a, a family portrait and then I send you, then a postcard is sent out so that you do have an actual hard copy of that particular image, but in a postcard form, which is, it's it, like the whole idea of postcard is about, you know, it's about memory, it's about being in a particular place at a particular time, and you know, it's, you always store those postcards somewhere. For me, this project has been a bit different in the sense that I've been able to combine everything at the one time. So it's just photograph, you know, it's through photographs, but also there's that element of performance as well. The, the people are actually really directing this and I can't actually direct it. So it's, I have to follow what they're, you know, what's happening at that, at that moment in time, which is, it's really exciting to have been done, but it's been maybe one of my favorite projects I've worked on. Yeah, I'll get you to turn a bit more this yeah, your face a bit more. Yeah, that's it. So the light was getting yeah. yeah. You got to get my best profile. <laughs> Fantastic. Beautiful, that's great. It doesn't make me look too old. No, you are not. Walk up quick at about noon. Just thought that I had to be in Compton soon. I gotta get drunk before the day begins. Before my mother starts bitching about my friends. About to go and down. Just before I have to go to school, Mum tells me to go and sit with my grandmother. Okay, but just for a minute, I have to get to school early. We have swimming carnival. It's a simple Arab tale from you know the suburbs of Sydney, and that's kind of rare. He turns and stares at his mum, and then turns to me again and again. He shrugs. It's like being hit with a sledgehammer. Guess what we've concentrated on from the novel is um, really the passing of the matriarch of the family. It's so real and so um, intimate in its, in its kind of simplest expression of the, the passing of a grandmother in a family that it's, it's even more than, more than a connection just because of my Arabness. It's a connection just because everyone has a grandmother and you, know, you, you, you share that story. You, share, you, know, you, you understand when, 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 a, when a, a loved one passes. And, um, so that's, that's the kind of magic of it. I was only 11 when this happened. But it always feels like right now. The 
the sun, still weaving in and out of the clouds. And the hearse vanishing down Caitlin Street. And all the way, the voice of Beth in a hood weeps. the context of this this amazing backyard and this setting so as soon as we got here on Tuesday it was like okay now we know what the show is and even more so when we started seeing some of the other performances and that gave it even more of a context and then then again it, it got even better with the audience just sat there and you see these people sitting on picnic blankets and then under trees and you know sometimes beautifully and wonderfully like listening to the show with a beautiful soundtrack from Una on the cello but then also the soundtrack of you know birds just going, you know, nesting or going home at night, you know, so it's got this, like, the magic and the wind, so it, it's, it's amazing. I can't, I can't describe it. It's been the best thing. You know, I could have listened to him for another three hours. He, he really just sat in it so comfortably. I loved his energy. Uh, at moments, um, I was, like, my heart was racing and, um, and also it was just really nice to be let into another world. You can look up at the stars or look at the moon and, and you know when you're doing that at moments when it's kind of resonant with what the performer is saying it kind of changes everything and you realize how limiting a black theater space is when you can have that kind of extra uh, dynamic element of the weather and the moon and the stars and, and everything around it. Just over a year ago I got contacted by Rosie Dennis, who's the artistic director of the company, and we met in Sydney when I was up here performing at something else at the festival and we were talking about what Bankstown Live was all about. And then through those discussions around the themes of sort of community and family, right there and then I just had this idea around lullabies. She collected a whole bunch of lullabies from uh, people living in the Bankstown area. I found myself sitting in a room with many different people from the whole area, um, different community groups, cultural groups, families, mothers, fathers, and learning lullabies from them. And that was a completely disarming and wonderful experience. And I think I went to about two or three sessions with her where she was learning the lullaby around kitchen tables in people's homes. And you know, it was kind of extraordinary watching her work, write the lullaby down phonetically, uh, have, the, have the person sing it to her, record it, she'd sing it back. And really by the end of the two hour coffee that we were having, she was singing that lullaby back to them. And it was, a, it was pretty amazing. And um, the lullaby that closes out the night, I can't recall the name of the top of my head, but it was um, sung by a man called Andreas. Um, and really we were going to Andreas's house to meet his wife, Eftahia, because Eftahia had a lullaby. And um, we were there, we were having coffee on this particular day, and we were all talking, and Eftahia and Andreas don't really speak very much English at all. And um, so we always had to have one of their daughters there to just help the, um, the conversation. And then out of the blue, Andreas just started singing this lullaby. I sing before my children. Uh, I sing at the, on the sleep. 
country. My country, Cyprus. It was pretty beautiful because only man around the table of all these women and started singing a lullaby. And Andreas has come to Bankstown Live every night and he's listened to Toby Martin's set and then he's walked up to the lullaby movement and that whole family's come up the last three nights as well. I couldn't believe it was live, like the voice was so incredible to, to be doing that in a suburban driveway and have it sound like, you know, kind of like it's at the Opera House or something, it was, it was incredible. My Reshi Berlin. He says he likes it very much. <laughs>